What the fuck is up, everyone? Prison Meddler here. I'm back with an album re-rank. And it's last of the big four. And as y'all may know it, yes. I'm re-ranking Anthrax. Now, before I start this ranking, this is going to be very controversial. And I'm going to tell you why. Because sadly, for all you Anthrax fans... I'm not really a big fan of this band. I'm going to let y'all know. I don't think they're bad at all. The reason why is because um, most of their music just don't reach me very well. I kind of find I kind of find them a bit repetitive at times. So, and they just got real old to me really fast. So, that's pretty much why I'm not really a big fan of them. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be very controversial, guys. So this is why I call it the Triggered Edition, because of that. So without further ado, let's just get started with my most controversial re-ranking. Okay, so... Starting up at 11... There's 11 of them, by the way. So starting up at number 11... I'm going to have to pick Volume 8, The Threat is Real. Oh my god, where, where do I start with this album? This, I mean, okay, before I'm going to talk about this album, I'm going to let you know that I'm a fan of John Bush. I think he's an amazing vocalist, and I find him a really great replacement for jo Joey Belladonna. And controversially, in my personal opinion... I think he's better than Joey Belladonna, in my opinion. I'm just going to let y'all know. Besides, I fucking love Armor Saint, which he's in. He, he he was amazing in Armor Saint. He's such an underrated vocalist of all time. One of the most underrated vocalists of all time. But this album is just... This album is just trash, in my opinion. Um, first of all, this... It's more like playlist than an album. It just doesn't really have its content. First of all, you'll get either... It's it's like listening to a complete different song from next one and then another one. You'll either get... Um, you either get, what? Groove metal, and then next song you get, like, grunge. And then next song you get new metal, and then you get alternative rock. And then next song you get hardcore punk. And then next song you get, like, pop rock sound. And then the next one is, believe it or not, fucking country. Yeah, that's how this album goes. It doesn't know what it wants to be, to be honest. It's just completely random. Yeah, this is more of a playlist than an actual album. So, and that's why I don't really like this album. So this is definitely at the bottom. But I love John Bush, but this album is just not good at all. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much I have to say here. So, um, but there's a few decent songs, like, um, like Catharsis, Inside Out, and Born Again Idiot. I like Born Again Idiot because it features Dimebag Daryl from Pantera, and as well as Inside Out. I think Dimebag Daryl is in that song as well. Um, so yeah, but yeah, yeah, this one isn't good at all to be quite, well, it has a few decent moments, but most of it is just not good. So yeah, volume eight, threat is feel, threat is real, comes in at their worst. Okay. Now number 10 is going to have to be, we've come for you all now. Um, the reason why I put it as my second least favorite nowadays is because um, this album, I just can't get into this album for some reason, um, but it's not bad. It's not as god awful as um, it's not as god awful as um, Thread is Real. It does have a few decent moments, but most of it is just really, really boring. Few songs I like is "What Doesn't Die," um, "Strap It On," which features Dimebag Daryl, 
and Black Dahlia, which features an amazing blast beat from um, Charlie Benante, what, and um, Cadillac Rockbox, which also which features Dimebag Daryl again from Pantera. I'm a fan of Pantera, that's why I love those songs because of Dimebag Daryl. That's mainly the reason why. But um, yeah, it's just really, really formulaic from this album. That's the reason why. Um, so this has to be my second least favorite from this one. So yeah, we've come for you all. Comes in at ten. <sighs> okay, now number nine. Yes, number nine. It's going to be their latest album for All Kings. Um, I couldn't get into this one either. It feels like leftovers from their previous album, um, Worship Music. But many people said for All Kings is a lot better. But for me, I strongly disagree. But I respect your opinion, though. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm not a big fan of this one either. It's just... It's my third least favorite. It's just... The reason why is because most the songs are just way too long. And they could have just trimmed out some of the stuff on there. But yeah. Um, it's kind of... Eh, it's, but the songs I kind of... I do like is... Gotta Believe, For All Kings, and All of Them Thieves, and Zero Tolerance. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. But, yeah, um, for this one, um, I'm not a big fan of this one either. Yes, I'll say it's better than Slayer's awful album, Repentless. But this one, but for All Kings, I couldn't get into this one either. I still can't. So this has to be my third least favorite. Okay, number seven. No, wait, I'm sorry, guys. Number eight. Um, yeah, number eight. Um, ready for some controversy? Well, kind of, for some of you. It's going to be State of Urethra. You're not Urethra. Urephoria, or whatever that name is. But, yeah. Um, this one, um... Not a bad album at all. I there's some songs I really do like, like Be All and All, Antisocial, but yeah, I mean, pretty thrashy album. But most of the songs on there are just way too long. Besides, the, I find the chorus very, very repetitive, and and it just makes me. It just makes me go way off guard. That's pretty much why I had to put this at the near bottom. This is the reason why I'm not a big fan of Anthrax. Because it, they get really repetitive. Especially their longer songs. So, um, yeah. But, um... This let me know. Songs I do like from here is Be All End All, Make Me Laugh, Antisocial, now it's dark and finale. Those are the four songs I do like, or five. I don't know. My math sucks. So, but yeah, those are the few songs I like from this one. But from this one, I couldn't get into this one either. It's kind of very repetitive, to be honest. So, this album comes in at number eight. Sorry, guys. I got fucking allergies. God. God damn, dude. Okay. Number seven. I got Stomp 442. Um, this one, actually, this one's pretty much underrated, to be honest. Yes, um, it's, it has some few shitty songs on here, but it's actually a very decent album. If you just... If you just remove some of the shittiest songs from there, 
the owl would definitely be higher on my list, to be quite honest. But, uh, yeah. The songs I do like from here is Random Acts of Senseless Violence, Fueled, uh, Riding Shotgun, Features Dimebag Daryl. King Size is one of my favorites as, too, as well. Because of fucking Dimebag Daryl. Um, in the Zone. Nothing. Drop the Bell and Bear. Yeah, I find this album pretty underrated. Yeah, I can... This one's quite understandable to be one of the hater... Hatest albums, but... Because of the, there's a few shitty songs in there. But once you take these songs out, it, I think, um, because um, I don't know, I don't know why. I, I'm sorry, guys. It's these allergies. Once I sneeze, I begin to lose some sense at times. But like I said before, if some of the worst songs were removed, then this album would be way up top, well, or higher, as I should say, but yeah, um, but yeah, also this album cover, too, that album cover looks, too, it's just a naked-ass man next to a pile of garbage, that's just, that's just dumb, but yeah, it's quite underrated, to be honest, but it's nowhere near my favorite, there are way better albums than this, so stop 42, 442 would be at number 7. Okay. Number 6. It's going to be very controversial. I must warn you. Are you guys ready for a massive controversy at number 6? You ready to pump up your fist and start punching the fucking screen? Alright. Here comes the controversy at number 6. Among the Living. No, I'm serious. Among the Living is at number six for me. Um, you want to know why? It's mo because some of the songs on there I find way too repetitive. Some of the songs are just way too long for me and just too repetitive. Uh, but there's a few songs I actually do like from this one. It's Among the Living. Caught in the Mosh, I'm the Law, NFL, Nice Fucking Life, Indians, and Imitation of Life. So yeah, um, those are the six songs I do like. The rest, the last um, three songs are just a bit too long, and it kind of got really, really repetitive for me, so... Yeah, that's why. Um, but, yeah, it's not a bad album at all. I just find this album to be pretty overrated. I don't know why, but it's whatever. Um, but, yeah, it used to be my favorite, but nowadays it kind of went bad for me. And it kind of get really repetitive, and they could just trim it out. So, yeah, I'm sorry, guys, but I'm on the living. It has to be at number six for me. Okay, now, oh, Jesus, number five, I got Spreading the Disease. Oh, you didn't see this one at number five, huh? Sorry, guys, I got fucking goddamn allergies. Okay, yeah, number five, Spreading, Dis the, uh, spreading the Disease. This may be my second favorite. No, I'm sorry, my third favorite in the Joey Belladonna era is because it's not as long as repetitive as, um, fuck, as, um, Among the Living, but there's a shit ton of songs I really do like, and, um, it's AIR, Lone Justice, Madhouse, The Enemy, Aftershark, Arm and Dangerous, Medusa, and my favorite closing, one of my favorite songs from this album is Gung Ho, because it was written by the legendary vocalist Neil Turbin. But yeah, um, yeah, this one's actually quite 
this one's a pretty great one, to be honest. But, um, yeah, um, like I said before, I'm not really a big fan of Anthrax. That's why this one is quite the number five or a bit of the middle for me. So, but it managed to be in my top five. So, yeah. Um, spreading the disease, it definitely comes in at number five. <clears throat> All right. Now, number four, I got, this used to be my favorite Anthrax album, but for some reason it's not anymore. It's going to be Persistence of Time, but um, I know some of you will call me a hypocrite because some of the songs are a bit too long, but I'm going to be honest with you in my personal opinion. I think these long songs are executed very well, I would say. For, for this one, I'm going to be quite honest with y'all. Um, this one is a bit more uh, serious and progressive. And it's kind of one of their... This one kind of abandons their most silly-ish sounding sounds. But, um, yeah. I find this one quite under... Well, underrated or maybe a classic to some of y'all. I don't know. But this one, I actually like all songs from it. So I'm going to name them out for y'all. Time, Blood, Keep It In The Family, In My World, Gridlock, Intro To Reality, which is basically the intro for Belly of the Beast. Belly of the Beast is an amazing song, by the way. Got The Time, which is a cover from Joe Jackson. Hate Red, One Man Stands, and Discharge. But yeah, I do like all songs from this one, but it managed to drop down to number four for me for some reason. Because I just like the top three more. That's pretty much it. But yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, there's really nothing else. Yeah, it's their last album with Joey Belladonna on vocals. Until his return on their 2011 album. Which I'll explain later. So yeah. I'd say Persistence of Time has to come in at four for me. Okay. Now number three. I got um, the John, the first album with John Bush, and that is The Sound of White Noise. This album grew on me way more than it had. This one used to be my second least favorite, but now it's my third favorite. I really love this one. Fortunately, it's the last album with Dan Spitz on guitar. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I actually quite enjoy this one. This one does, it kind of has some more of its alternative metal sound with some elements of their um, standard heavy metal. But it does continue with some thrash moments, though, here and there. But, um, yeah. Look, all songs, I'm not going to include their bonus tracks, by the way. Um, but, yeah, there's 11 of them. We got Potter's Field, Only, Room for One More, Package Rebellion. High Pro Glow, Invincible, Thousands Points of Hate, Black Lodge, C H N O S N A, Burst, and then This Is Not an Exit. I find this one severely underrated. Um, like I said before, I do love John Bush, and I like, I'm a fan of his other band, Armored Saint. I would love to do a ranking on them sometime in the future, but yeah. Um, this is a really great album, but unfortunately, this comes in at number three, in my personal opinion. Okay, now, number two is Worship Music. You didn't see this one quite high, right? I actually enjoy this one. This is definitely my favorite um, Anthrax, Joey Belladonna. As let me know, it marks the return of their vocalist. This is their first album in over, well, I think 21 years. And, yeah, it's a cool return for this band. I really, I love all songs. Um, I was not going to lie. Um, this was, he had one of the best vocal, 
Joey Belladonna has performed one of the best vocals he has ever done. His vocals is very strong in this one. I'm really not going to lie to you here. Um, but, um, but yeah. I love all songs. Um, this one, this does not include interludes or intros, just so y'all know. Um, we got Earth on Hell, The Devil You Know, Fight Him Till You Can't, I'm Alive, In the End, The Giant, Judas Priest, well, it's about the band, yeah, Crawl, The Constant, Revolution Screams, and their hidden track, New Noise, but yeah, yeah, I really love this album, this is like, this is Anthrax's Death Magnetic, except there is no Rick Rubin shitty loudness war production. I mean, that's why I had to put this really high. This is their death magnetic, but the production is much better than it was in death magnetic way better. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why. Um, but yeah, yeah, much better production than Death Magnetic and um, World Painted Blood by Slayer. But yeah, I really enjoy this one a lot more than I have. So, fortunately, Worship Music comes in at number two for me. And number one, ready to be surprised at number one? It's going to be their debut album, um, Fistful of Metal. Oh, you didn't see this one. It's my favorite now. You want to know why? Fucking vocalist Neil Turbin. Holy shit, he was so underrated at singing. I mean, dude, he's like fucking Rob Halford. I mean, this one has elements of um, new British wave of heavy metal. But, yes, I consider this one to be a thrash album as well. But, um... But yeah, his vocal, Neil Turbin, this is the only album with him in it. Damn it, I wish he was still in this band today. I mean, if he's still in Anthrax, Anthrax might have been my favorite in the top four. But unfortunately, no, it's my least favorite out of the big four. Out of all the big four of their debuts, this is my favorite out of the big four. Because Neil Turbin's vocals is a beast. I mean, I love all songs. There's 10 of them. Um, well, on the Japanese version, they added Race Hell as track 6. So I'll name out the songs for you. Death Rider, Metal Thrashing Mad, I'm 18, which is a cover from Alice Cooper. Panic, Sub Gator, Soldiers of Metal, Death From Above, Anthrax, um, Across the River, which is the instrumental. Well, it's a intro for Howling Furries. So yeah, I have to say this album is my favorite by Anthrax today, or maybe of all time. Neil Turbin, oh my god. I wish he's still in this band, to be honest with y'all. But um, yeah, Neil Turbin's a legendary songwriter. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, if that's all I have to say for this one, I'm going to say more. I'm just going to get really repetitive. Um, so, yeah. Fistful of Metal is my favorite Anthrax album. So, this has to be at number one for me. And that is my Anthrax album ranking from worst to best. So, what is your ranking for Anthrax albums from worst to best? Let me know in the comments. So, yeah. Um, I'm probably... I don't know what's next on my re-ranking. Maybe, maybe Van Halen or Corn or Mushroom Head. I don't know what I'm doing next. Maybe Mushroom Head next. I don't know, but or maybe Corn or Van Halen. I don't know. I'll let y'all know what I'm doing next. But the highest chance I will rank would probably be Corn. So yeah, I might do Corn after. My Anthrax re-rank, so I don't know. But as for the new ranking, yes, I will be ranking Godsmack next. 
then Power Wolf, then after, yeah, after Magotsmack is Power Wolf. I was originally going to do Power Wolf next, but I was almost done. I only had to listen to their newest album, but unfortunately, it comes out on the 16th. That's why I had to put it on hold because of that. And then after Power Wolf, then I will rank Dio. And then after Dio, then I will rank my longest ranking ever, Motorhead. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to me if you haven't. Click the bell for notification. Make sure you leave a like and comment. And most importantly, share this video so I can get more views and subscribers. And make sure you join my live stream every Tuesday and subscribe to my gaming channel, The Prison Gamer, for gameplay videos of me playing video games and all. So, yeah. So, until then, I'll see you all next time. Peace out, everyone.